Hello. So now that we've had a basic introduction to assembly programming, we're going to spend the next couple of days uh, looking into these topics in more detail and sort of uh, learning more uh, of the nitty gritty details about how all these low level system components work together. So today we're going to be talking about data movement and arithmetic. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, how we move data around in assembly and what makes a valid movement instruction. We'll talk a little bit about how uh, we can use stack operations to manipu manipulate memory. And then we'll uh, wrap up by talking about all of the arithmetic and logical operators that we have. So just as a quick reminder, we're talking about the standard von Neumann architecture. This is sort of a simplified version of what uh, a system diagram might look like. But the basic uh, cycle that repeats over and over while a program executes is that the CPU will fetch an instruction from main memory. Uh, it will then decode it to figure out what it needs to do. And then it will execute it, which may involve writing to memory or writing to the registers or reading from the registers or memory, uh, as well as doing operations uh, on the the arithmetic logic unit. And it just keeps doing this until the program is done. So we need to uh, start by talking about how we move data around uh, between registers and memory. Uh, and so the primary data movement instruction that we've already introduced is the move instruction, MOV. Uh, and uh, contrary to the name, it's actually a copy. So uh, we talk about moving data, but it's, it's really just copying data from one place to another. And the complication that we haven't really addressed yet is that there aren't any types in assembly code. So you have to know how many bytes you want to move. And this is yet another place where we want to emphasize this core concept, which is that information is bits plus context. You can't do a useful data movement operation if you don't know how much data you want to move. And so often, there will be uh, not just a single machine code instruction, but a family or a class of machine code instructions that will perform similar operations on different sizes of data. So for instance, it's not just MOV, but it's MOV with some suffixes. Uh, so here, I have to take a quick pause to acknowledge a historical artifact, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, and it is that the word word uh, actually means something slightly different in this context than, than general, uh, generally speaking. So we, we generally have defined word as being uh, the size of a machine pointer. Um, but in x86, this became defined as 16 bits fairly early on. And so even when the machine started to become larger uh, and have pointers uh, and addresses that were 32 or 64 bits wide, uh, for some reason, we still use the term word uh, to refer to 16 bits in the x86 uh, family of instruction sets. And so uh, unfortunately, we still have this notion that we have byte instructions, we have word instructions, which are 16 bits, we have double or long word instructions, which are 32 bits, and we have quad word instructions, which are 64 bits. So th these correspond to the B, W, L, and Q suffix suffixes, uh, respectively. So we can now see that our primary data movement instruction, MOV, uh, is actually kind of a family of instructions. And these are actually all valid instructions. So move B moves a byte, it move W moves a word, which is 16 bits. Uh, move L moves a uh, long word or 32 bits, and then Q and uh, uh, move abs Q are both instructions that move 64 bits. Move absolute Q is actually the only form that takes a 64 bit intermediate, which is another one of those weird corner cases in x86. There are also variants of this that do extensions. So if you want to move from a smaller size to a larger size, uh, there are instructions that will do that. Um, and there are also instructions that will do that with a sign extension rather than just filling in zero. So if you have an unsigned number, you'll want to use the zero extension variants. And if you have a, sign, uh, a signed number, you'll want to use the sign extension variant. But all of the naming works the same. Basically, you have the move and then the type of the move. So either uh, no type or zero extension or sign extension, and then the source and the destination. Uh, and again, you really only need these last two variants if you're increasing the size of the data. You may wonder, well, do I need uh, sort of the reverse? Do I need to have an instruction that uh, makes the data smaller? 
Uh, and, and the answer there is that that's really just truncation. And so you don't really need a special instruction for that. You can just use the smaller move. So if, for instance, you wanted to change a 64-bit value to a 32-bit value, you would just use the 32-bit move instruction to move the lower 32 bits from the source to the destination. And again, you'd, you'd lose the high order 64 bits. So you would want to make sure that whatever you're converting uh, is, is, uh, is OK to be truncated like that. So now that we have this idea of multiple sizes for our moves, uh, we need to acknowledge that the registers in our register file uh, actually have multiple names. So uh, the registers in an x86-64 machine are all 64 bits wide, but there are different names for the different parts of them. And this is for legacy reasons. Again, uh, there's a lot of code out there that uses the smaller sizes, and we want our machines to be backwards compatible with that code, and so the old register names are still valid. So for instance, you can address the low order 8 bits of the A register using AL, the high order 8 bits using AH. Uh, you can address that entire 16-bit block as AX. You can address the 32-bit block, so that's AX plus another 16 bits as EAX. And then you can address the entire 64-bit uh, register as RAX. And uh, these are these are just uh, things that were chosen that uh, had meaning at the time, uh, and so they're just uh, things that we have to work with now. And one of the outworkings of this is that the suffixes and the sizes of the operands have to match. So, for instance, we can move a quad word or 64 bits into a 64-bit register, as indicated by the R. Um, but we can't move a 64-bit value into a 32-bit register. Um, the assembler will not let us do that. We would have to write that using a 32-bit move. So uh, that's one thing that we have to do to check our data movement instructions for validity. Uh, another thing that we need to do is be a little bit careful about the memory operands. So uh, in x86-64, all the addresses are always 32 or 64 bits. And so all the registers used to calculate the effective address of that memory operand have to be 32 or 64 bits. So that's why these two instructions are valid because the register used to calculate the effective address of the memory operand is either 32 or 64 bits. That means that uh, these two move instructions are not valid. In this case, it's because it's a memory operand and we're using a register that is not 32 or 64 bits to calculate its effective address. Uh, and here we're uh, moving into a 64-bit register, but we're only moving a word, which is 16 bits of data. Now, it's important to be careful here that when you're sort of checking for validity and you're, you're looking at the registers that are used for the effective address calculation, the sizes of those registers uh, has nothing to do with the size of the data that is being moved. These are just the registers that are being used to calculate the effective address of the memory operand. And so the size of the data that is moved by the instruction is determined by either the register operand or by the instruction suffix. Uh, and if those are both there, then they have to match. Um, and, and again, just to, to reconfirm this, the size of the move is determined by the suffix or the register op the operand, not the register used as the effective address calculation for the memory operand. Uh, and again, this is because memory locations don't have a type in machine and assembly code. And so you have to do the appropriate move for whatever type of data you know you have on disk. <laughs>